Welcome to video number five, the video sales letter formula. We're going to be covering the formula in video five, six, and seven. And I want to say that there are two parts of the hybrid sales letter video. Part one, we're going to be covering the written process. And then part two, I'm going to talk about the technology so that you understand where you can go to get such as whiteboard videos, Prezi videos done, different types of technologies that are available to you other than the basic PowerPoint, black and white video sales letter. But before we can get to that point, we have to finish part one, which is video five, six, and seven. Once you have that written video sales letter in hand, it's just gonna make your life a lot easier. All right, so moving on, the first thing I want you to do before we actually get into the written process is by defining the enemy. You have to define the enemy. You got to define the person or in a common enemy. And then you are defined as the hero or the person who has been in their shoes, been there, done that. You've encountered the enemy and you've overcome the enemy. Now, let me explain what I mean by the enemy. If you think about movies and story plots and things that are very intriguing, there's always a hero and there's always an enemy. So let me give you an example. Patient versus doctor. Debtor versus bank or debtor versus creditor. So let's say, for example, we have some sort of health related product. And if you're aware, there's certain diseases that, you know, certain doctors that are like, okay, there's no cure for a certain ailment, but there is not in the pharmaceutical world but perhaps there are some, some sort of vitamins or supplements that actually helped, but there's really no statistical data that the doctor looks at and says, okay, this is okay. In this case, the doctor is the enemy because let's say for example, that you have a health product that actually helps resolve this ailment is not a pharmaceutical thing. So, you, you know, the FDA hasn't necessarily approved of it, but it works. So let's say for example, IBS, irritable bowel syndrome. The most of the times the doctors say there's no cure. There's nothing you can really do about it. There are some pharmaceutical drugs out there for that, but they might not work. And plus they have side effects. So in this case, the enemy is the doctor or the pharmaceutical company. And then the patient is your audience. So whenever you're writing, for example, a headline, when you're grabbing the attention, which is the first thing you need to do, you have seconds to grab somebody's attention. So what you do is you need a headline and a sub headline to back it up. And you can do something as an example, like discover how to maintain your irritable bowel syndrome, pain level, stuff like that. Because if you're not aware of irritable bowel syndrome, basically whatever you eat, certain foods trigger really bad, painful symptoms. So in this case, you could say what the doctors don't want you to know about blah, blah, my product or service which will lessen your irritable bowel syndrome. So you see where I'm going with this? That's why you need the common enemy. Or, or let's say, for example, you got a debtor versus a creditor. What the creditor doesn't want you to know about paying back your debts. So you see, you got the common enemy, the patient or the prospect is your audience and you are the hero. You are the person who has been in their shoes. You have figured out some sort of way out and you are no longer in pain. So that's where it is. The first thing is to grab attention and then integrate the common enemy in there. 
And the second thing is to identify the problem. So obviously the problem in this case is irritable bowel syndrome, the pain of it, the side effects and things like that. So remember their objection is probably going to be, well, why should I be listening to you? You're not a doctor. You're obviously saying, you know, doctors don't want you to know this, but why should I listen to you? Well, that's when you can bring in your story and you can be clear about the problem. So you want to be clear about the problem. You want to say, Hey, this is a problem. I've been there. I've done that. I've gone through the same pain level that you have gone. And then of course you can address those pains. So remember video three, we talked about a lot about FAQs and pains and stuff like that. That's when you take that information you've done and bring it into here. So if you've already done that, this is where you can bring a list of those FAQ questions. So in relation to irritable bowel syndrome, for example, we can say something like the problem with irritable bowel syndrome, there are many different types, but, and there are many different trigger foods. So let's say for example, that the question, the common questions that we received or we found were stuff like what are trigger foods to IBS or what does work, what lessens pain and things like that. So you basically want to agitate the pain level up by focusing on the emotion behind the pain, which the emotion behind the pain with IBS is that you're frustrated. You're so frustrated to the point that you've seen doctors, the doctors are like, you can't, we can't really do anything because there is really no cure to IBS. And the emotion behind the pain is frustration. They're frustrated. They're tired of being sick. They're tired of doctors. They probably don't like doctors at this point. So that's why that's the common enemy. And then the emotion behind the motivation is that of course they want to lessen their pain. Now with IBS, I'm familiar with it because I, I know somebody who actually has it, but I know that it's so frustrating. A lot of times after eating, they could be in bed in pain or walking around, not sleeping or, and things like that. So when I say agitate the pain level up, I mean, focus on where their pain is. So the, the pain is causing them not to sleep, causing them to increase their stress level, which also impacts their work, their job, you know, their benefits and things like that. So it, it's more than just, oh, you're having IBS pain. It's more than that. It's, it's the deep emotion behind the motivation of them watching your video sales letter and trying to figure out how your product and service can help them. So it's, it's deeper. If you can figure out the deep reasons why they're really in pain and how that affects them in life, that's going to help you. And then of course you can provide the solution. You can take a list of the FAQ questions rewrite them as they apply to your business. And then of course you can offer them the solution, which in this case is going to be your product and service. So for example, let's say for example, that your solution is some sort of diet plan for irritable IBS type irritable bowel syndrome patients that will help them. And it's an ongoing process that will help them lower their pain. And let's say a frequently asked question is what kind of foods should you avoid? You can re rewrite it so that it applies to your business. You see what I'm saying here? Then you can introduce your product or service. And then after that, let's move on to the next video.